Pop! OS 19.04 released last week with a host of improvements, many of which come from the underlying Ubuntu 19.04, but there have been some improvements to Pop! OS itself as well. This video is going to go over both the improvements that 19.04 features over previous releases, as well as a general review of Pop! OS as a whole. First things first, I want to briefly go over the Pop! OS installer, as it is, in my and I'm sure many other people's opinion, easily one of, if not the best installer for Linux distributions. The purpose is just to get the operating system installed as quickly as possible. You have options to either do a clean installation or more advanced options for those who know what they're doing. I'm not going to go in-depth to those advanced options on this video, but I will do a follow-up later on reviewing the installer itself and going over some advanced options that might actually still be a good idea even if you're a beginner. When you first log in after installing, you'll be greeted with the initial setup. This will let you select your keyboard layout, connect to the internet, opt whether or not to activate location services, choose your time zone if you did not go for location services, you can optionally sign in to online accounts, and then you can select your username and password. Now, on the Pop! OS website, they do mention that Pop! OS is built for developers, makers, and computer science professionals, people who use their computer as a tool to discover and create. However, nowadays, it also works very well as an option for the average user, and especially for gamers who are just coming to Linux. The first thing that makes it great for both average users and gamers alike, they ship two separate ISOs depending on what graphics card you have in your computer. So if you're just running Intel integrated graphics or you have an AMD graphics card, you would go with the Intel slash AMD option. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you go with the NVIDIA option. Those are two separate ISOs as NVIDIA cards. If you want the best performance out of them, you will need the proprietary NVIDIA driver. Intel and AMD, on the other hand, have excellent open source drivers, and they are included with the Linux kernel itself. NVIDIA is not, but they do ship the separate ISO for NVIDIA users, so they can still have a great out-of-the-box experience. So, what does Pop! OS 1904 bring to the table over previous versions? First off, they ship with the latest version of the GNOME desktop, 3.3.2, which has great performance and efficiency improvements compared to previous GNOME releases. It has lower memory usage and very noticeable performance improvements in that the whole desktop just feels snappier than it ever did before. So if you're upgrading to Pop! OS 1904 from a previous release, you should notice the difference. As well as shipping with GNOME 3.32, Pop! OS does, as always, ship with a fairly minimal set of applications. Most of what you see here is included on install. I have added GNOME Web as well as GNOME Tweaks. GNOME Tweaks I'll be showing later to show off some of the Pop! OS specific customizations to GNOME Shell. GNOME Web is there just because I like GNOME Web as a browser. You will also notice that the Pop! OS icon theme has been changed from the previous release. It was originally based on the papyrus icons, but now it features a very distinct look to them. As mentioned on the System76 blog, the icons for Pop! OS have been redesigned to complement GNOME's icons under their new design guidelines. They have also removed custom icons for third-party applications to keep the author's design choices for these applications intact and to maintain their intended identity and branding with many of the GNOME icons themselves being updated, and System76 even hopes to work with GNOME to help design app icons that have not yet been updated. Some other changes that Pop! OS have done compared to vanilla GNOME shell, if we go into settings under the Appearance tab, they've actually added options to toggle a dark mode and a slim mode. So if we look here, you can see just from the regular settings, no need to go into GNOME tweaks, you can turn on and off dark mode. You can also turn on and off slim mode, which reduces the size of the header bar, and you can also use both options together. Now the interesting thing about those toggles is that they actually aren't just toggling on and off a dark mode, it is actually switching the theme over to the dark variant. 
as well as the Slim variant. So in a way, these options are kind of exposing options that you can access in Gnome Tweaks as well, just in a much more apparent and friendly way. That being said, since they're doing customizations to GNOME settings like this, one thing I would personally like to see, if nothing else added, would be bringing the option for mouse acceleration into the main settings, because that can be very helpful for gamers especially. Other changes that have come with the update to GNOME 3.32, GNOME Terminal finally uses a header bar like the rest of the modern GNOME applications, and GNOME Files has been updated to 3.32. It was previously held back to enable the usage of desktop icons, but that is no longer the case, as both Ubuntu and Pop! OS now ship with a desktop icons extension instead. So let's get into some of the extensions that Pop! OS ships with that you will not find on Vanilla GNOME, such as if you're running Fedora. They include a desktop icons extension. This is on by default, I turn it off because I don't use desktop icons, but it is on by default. It is the same one that Ubuntu uses. From what I understand, there are some features missing, such as drag and drop between the desktop and your file manager, but they do now use this instead of holding back the Nautilus version for desktop icons. Pop! OS also includes a Do Not Disturb extension, so you can toggle this on and off depending on if you want to block notifications, such as if you, well, don't want to be disturbed. There's also a battery icon fix, which I cannot test as this is a desktop computer, but I assume that would be good for those on laptops. Pop Shop Details, which allows you to, let's open up Gnome Web, for example, if you right click, show details, Basically, that allows similar functionality to what you would find on Ubuntu with GNOME software or Fedora with GNOME software. The Pop Shop Details extension here enables the same thing to happen just for Pop Shop instead, as Pop OS here uses Pop Shop rather than GNOME software. There is also a Suspend button extension to add a Suspend button to the status menu that is not there by default. And then there's also the System76 power management. Again, that's going to be more relevant to laptop users than desktop users. Overall, I like the additions that System76 do to GNOME Shell with Pop! OS. And for the most part, I leave most of the options default, except for a few things. I do change my mouse acceleration profile to flat. I also turn on the Activities Overview Hot Corner. I turn on weekday for the clock, and because I use elementary on my main machine, and just in general, I've kind of started to prefer having my uh, title bar buttons on the left rather than the right, and I also turn on center new windows. So a lot of what I've shown you so far is great for pretty much any user, whether you're a gamer or not. You can get the same kernel version as well as the Mesa drivers on other Ubuntu 1904 releases, so what's something that makes Pop! OS special and especially good for gamers? Pop! OS with Pop! Shop, as well as having a number of other applications in their own repositories, such as Atom, you can also find Lutris, which anybody who does gaming on Linux, especially those that like to play Windows games through Wine, You'll be familiar with Lutris. It is a game management application, and I could talk about it a lot here, but Lutris is worth a video in of itself. Many others have already done videos on it. I may in the future, but if you know what Lutris is, you know why this is such a great thing to have just in the Pop! OS repository because on other Ubuntu-based distributions, Ubuntu itself, Linux Mint, Elementary OS, others like that, you have to add the Lutris PPA. With Pop! OS, it's just right here in Pop! Shop. As well as Lutris, they do also include another game management application called Game Hub. Both of them are great. I have personally used Lutris a lot more than Game Hub, but... Both of them are available, and both are fine options. 
So that about covers it for this video. Let me know what you guys think of Pop! OS. Let me know if I missed any cool new additions to either this version of Pop! OS or just other cool things that Pop! OS does versus standard Ubuntu. I'm sure there's some things that I missed. Till next time, this has been Axel. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. I did not think of a conclusion for this video. Um...